welcome back to Ganesh Institute channel. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about the polymerization, its type and its advantages. So let's begin with the types of polymerization. So if we talk about what is polymerization, then see poly means many, mer means unit. So when we are adding, this is basically nothing but a chemical process, a chemical process in which we are joining different monomers and those monomers will be converting, uh, will be converted into polymers. Okay. How? Let me give you an example with this, these types. So there are two types of polymerization. One is addition and one is condensation. So if we talk about addition, addition polymerization, then the example is here, what you do, you have to add monomers. Monomers are added on to each other. And basically, we require a catalyst to add them. For example, let's say we have got this vinyl chloride, right? CH2, CHCl. So this is vinyl chloride. And you want to, this is one unit, right? One unit CH2, CHCl. You want to add on many units. So what you will do, it will be converted into this form, right? So CH, CH2, CHCl, again CH2, CHCl and so on. So it can be combined with n number of units, right? So after adding these n number of vinyl chloride, this will be formed as polyvinyl chloride. And you need some catalyst here, be it temperature or any chemical, which will do this addition and which will promote this addition okay whereas in condensation form there will be removal of something to add on so basically when monomers join when monomers join or polymerize with a byproduct with a byproduct like water co2 or ammonia will be removed then that will be the type of con condensation polymerization so let me give you an example. This can uh, sound complex, but it is not. You just need to remember the example. So let's say you have got one C double O O H C H two four times C double O O H. Okay, this is one monomer, and then you are having with it N H two C H two six. NH2, right? So these are two things. This compound is called adipic acid, and this monomer is hexamethylene. So when you will add them, so it has got to NH2 in it so that will make it diamine so when you add these two monomers you will get a polymer which will be like C if you can see this is OH and here this is H if you remove these two if you remove then it will form so H2O will be a byproduct water will be removed and they will be joined with this bond okay how let me write it here with a different pen so you can see everything will remain same only water every time uh, OH from one compound in H from another will be removed so that water can be formed or water uh, can be treated as a byproduct here now so this can also be done if you are taking n number of these monomers n numbers of this n number of this so it can also be combined with something else 
so i am leaving it alone that this will be the thing or bond uh, with which someone or any other product can be combined and then you have got ch2 for c now double bond o is there but here now this oh and h will be removed and it will be joined from here so it will be what it will be combined with n h right this h and oh will be removed n h is here then ch26 and h2 and also you can have it like this h will again be combined with someone else's oh so you can leave it free like one bond and then this will be known as nylon 66 correct so condensation means something will be removed and will be formed as a byproduct and in addition we need a catalyst to add on the monomers okay now moving on to the next bit which is if you have got polymerization so there are structures also of different polymers which affect their properties okay so what are they let's see so here you can see i have uh, written here linear chain polymers branched chain polymers and cross-linked polymers so it is quite uh, significant i mean uh, it is quite self-explanatory when you have got linear chain let's say if there is one atom and that is combined with another atom only single line they are having single chain and elements atoms compounds are combining in a single chain then it will be a linear chain so basically these chains when heated can flow easily and because they can flow easily they can be uh, you know recycled and changed into any form so we can see this type of structure in thermoplastics okay thermoplastic is also a kind of plastic which we can see and this is an advantage of polymers so linear chain however if you can see this is a single chain so can easily be broken right these chains are weak because the uh, structure is not like as you can see in branched and cross-linked we will see later on it is not that strong and that's why they are ductile those structures which are formed by linear chain are ductile and have low density and low melting point okay when you talk about branched so you have got this linear chain and another branch can be it can have a it can have branches okay it can have branches so it will be like this form so let's say there is an atom a so these can be combined it like combined like this okay now because they are branching so when they are heated they cannot be flown easily because they are stronger than linear chain and they have higher melting point and uh, so these are uh, stronger than linear chain okay and when you've got cross-linked so here let's say you have linear or branches in the structure and these can be connected like this as well okay they they've got cross links so that's why they are called cross linked and because you can see these are very very strong bond right and hence they are brittle right they are hard substances so you can use um, branching uh, cross linked polymers to make brittle substances where you need higher melting point right higher than linear and branched okay so now let's move on to the application of polymers we have different type of polymers i mean the examples if we talk about and they have got applications as well so let's see here you can see acrylic high density polythene like hdpe low density polythene polyvinyl chloride and polyethyl ketone uh, there are some applications let's get started with acrylic you can think of an example of acrylic uh, like polymethyl methacrylate okay let me write it here so that you can remember 
polymethyl methyl meth acrylate so this is an example of acrylic polymers so basically these can be used as an alternative of glass okay uh, we can make small fish tanks aquariums using acrylics we can have visors and goggles we can have helmet covers with this right and they have weather proofing qualities and hence we use them as uh, you know any outdoor glasses as a structure of alt or alternative of glass okay so this is uh, the application of acrylic when we talk about high density polythene so high density polythene also called as hdpe right polythene so they are used these first of all these are used quite significantly because they are very cheap and they are acid resistant so basically they are strong and if you want to soften them uh, you require 120 degrees celsius around and so these are used in if you want to have any kitchen equipment you want to make children's toys you want to have fabric filaments all those stuffs are made up of high density polythene because they have got high density okay now when we talk about low density polythene so we have, I mean, uh, they can be heated up or can get softened at around 85 degrees Celsius. Here we've 120, we've got 126, 120 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now these are because these are having low density, so they have more flexible structure than HDPE. Okay. So where you want um, thin structure or the structure where you want flexibility then you can use them for example plastic bags okay and in film and packaging you can use them now when we talk about pvc polyvinyl chloride so they are used uh, they they are commonly used i mean they are very very common in use so they use uh, they are used in industrial and domestic piping okay they are used in art to make artificial leathers. They are used to make protective clothing. So why uh, these are used in all these things? Polyvinyl chloride compounds are used in uh, the things which require protection because they are hard. They are very hard in terms of density, their structure, and they are cheaper as well. Okay, when we have got polyether ketone also known as peat so basically these are for those environments where there are harsh conditions very aggressive environments like when you want to uh, use them in nuclear plants uh, or in thermal wells where heat is there high pressure steam walls in order to make high pressure steam walls we use polyether ketone okay and if we want to make aircraft or car engine parts then also this is used why because it has got high melting point very high melting point and they've got high tensile strength as well very strong in tensile strength right and they have low coefficient of friction you know friction causes steering and wearing of machines because they have got low coefficient of friction so they are lightweight they have good chemical resistance so now because these many qualities are in it in in them polyether ketones the compound that's why they are very very costly okay this is one disadvantage we can think of now because we are studying about polymers and we have studied their applications so um if we want to use them so there are some environmental complications associated with them what are they they are basically non biodegradable substances so they take ages many years to degrade okay and hence some um, industries or companies use corn starch with them because then it is easier to break them down i mean little sooner they can be degraded but we need to think of some eco-friendly products so that 
they can be uh, you know they can be environment friendly and we don't have any uh, uh, complications towards the environment okay so i hope you have got an understanding and uh, if so then don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel till my next video take care of yourself bye bye